Is Wizard of Legend 2 worth your time and money? If you enjoyed Telegraph Combat, where you aim your abilities, spells, iframes, where you can dodge enemy attacks with good timing, nice progression, pretty visually appealing game, and tons of different spells to choose from. And I mean tons. I have legit not seen even half the ones the game has to offer. The story is not crazy by any means at all. It's kind of there and they're gonna, they'll be developing it more. But for me, it's more of the fast paced combat I enjoy. If most of that sounds appealing, the game is definitely well worth $25. I bought it myself. This is not a sponsored video in any way, shape or form. We don't get those here, unfortunately. It helped pay the bills, but oh well. I think the game is enjoyable to play. And that's all I'm looking for these days is a game that's fun. You got replayability. Do understand the game is true early access, which means it'll get more content as time progresses. A great example of what this looks like is Raven's Watch. Initially, I had one chapter, a couple of legends, and now it's, early, it's full release and they have even more content planned. To explain how this game works, though, you have three spells you start off with. Your basic, ultimate, and then your standard. Your ultimate is also a standard ability until you get enough of this mana. Once you have that, you'll be going blue and you can press it again and do big things. So essentially you have four spells when you only really see three. And you can get more when you're playing the missions. When you're doing your expeditions or whatever they call them in this game, I don't know. You'll be able to buy these new spells from the vendor with gold. And then you can have five total spells, technically six if you use our ultimate and count that. And that's just what you can be pressing when you're playing. And their cooldowns are not ridiculously long either. So you are having pretty high APM. Not to mention your dashing doesn't really have a strict cooldown. Within the first few moments of the game, you can choose your element. Fire, wind, earth, electric, water. I chose electric and these are my abilities. Two were electric and one was water, ice. I believe the reason for getting a water spell is because electric and water have a synergy. If you electrocute a frozen enemy, they take massive arcana damage. There seems to be a six element. Water, fire, earth, electric, wind, umbral, black dauntless. I recommend starting off as an earth elementalist because the earth abilities are sick. I don't know what it gives you, but it'll probably be pretty cool. To change your abilities, go to the top right of the dummies and talk to Sergique and spend some Chaos Gems, a currency you'll need for a ton of different things, but you get it pretty quickly from playing the game, even on the lowest difficulty. And they buy these spells right here. They're only 50, which I am one short, unfortunately. And then when you buy the spells, currently these are all standard ones. You can get basic, you can get the advanced ones. Change your spells you have equipped at the book here. You can only change the first three slots, so basic, signature, which is also your ultimate, and standard. Basic skills, I have almost all the elements for basics. I have two electric types, and it seems to be that there's two different versions of each one. A melee version and a long range, a long range version. As for your basic that I've unlocked so far. Then we have our signature, ultimate, as I call it. I have two shock, one water, and one air. And then standard which I'm a big fan of the dragons. I think I mentioned it earlier, but maybe not. Furthermore, when you beat a chapter, you can also augment an ability, giving it new ways of functioning or just improving the one it currently has. Maybe it circles back. It has more damage, more dragons being sent out. You name it. There's a lot more ways to get power as a wizard. There's the portals, these defense crystals you activate and then kill a bunch of mobs. And after that, you usually get the ability to give your abilities more crit chance, damage, be on the lookout for things that look out of place and interact with them. And you'll probably get some extra damage is the main takeaway here. Bottom right, you have your relic vendor, which are passives you can purchase. Read them, switch when you like, get it. And once you have it, go to this chest and equip it. You only have one, at least I can so far. That is your starting relic. You get more from playing the game at the relic altar after beating certain checkpoints in the mission, journey, expedition, whatever we're calling it. Then you have the vendor. You can spend 100 to 150 on different relics. After that, we have the frog. You turn in one relic out of three options and you tend to get a decent upgrade. Once you choose one to turn in, you have to go through with the transaction. The cursed relic shop, a bonus and a downside. The bonuses are pretty good, but sometimes the downsides are also pretty bad. Every currency in the top right, except for gold, is used to progress your character in some way, form, or fashion. The Chaos Gems are gotten from just playing, killing mobs, opening random chests here and there. And you can also get some of that from completing your tasks. You can also get Arcane Chrono from tasks as well, but those are normally gotten from killing the Elementalists. Then you have the Chaos Fragment looking thing, the eye. That's from killing the evil looking bosses. Normally at the end of, or in the middle of chapter two, 
somewhere around there. You can use the Chaos Fragments to also customize your character and change how you look. Your cloak. 75 up to 150 for a cloak. Oh my goodness. Your cloak color. That's mostly free. Blue's best color. Just saying. Symbol. I haven't gotten to that yet because I'm just trying to get my abilities first. Symbol color. Same dealio. And you have your headgear. Which you can't preview it, I don't believe. Oh, you can't. But there is some customization. Not crazy, but it's enough for me. Welcome to Wizard of Legend 2 Early Access. You're about to play an early version of our game that will grow and improve during this period. This version is a work in progress and your feedback will be crucial in shaping the final game. Currently, you can explore two biomes and enjoy two player multiplayer. The core gameplay mechanics are ready for your feedback. As you progress, we'll have more biomes, introduce a four player co-op, expand the story, and increase your arsenal of arcana and relics. Arcana being the spells. And relics being what augment your damage and maybe even your spells as well. Gamers are terrified of the word early access. And if I was y'all, I wouldn't be for this genre in particular. Raven's Watch, early access at the start, now at full release. I had one chapter, I believe five, maybe six heroes to choose from. A lot less augmentation of your abilities through the talent tree and other lacking features. I still enjoyed it though. And now you have three chapters. You have roughly eight heroes, maybe nine, soon to be more in the future. And it's crazy. All the new augmentations for your abilities that you unlock by leveling up your character and the quality of improvements are phenomenal. I think the same thing could happen with Wizard of Legend. All you have to really do is enjoy the baseline game. If you enjoy that, you'll like where it goes from there. That's all you have to do. And it helps when you try different things. And Raven's Watch, when you had one chapter, I would play every single different character. And I got roughly 40 hours out of it easily, maybe even 60, in just chapter one. Wizard of Legend, you have so many different abilities that I think are sick. It feels so fun to be playing this fast-paced, action-packed game that in almost some senses is very button spammy, but also your actions are deliberate, or your actions are impactful because if you don't dodge, you die. And you can increase difficulty, making it so that is more of a thought you have to have, is dodging attacks. I like that. If you don't want to do that, you want to play on an easy, easier, in quotations, because who cares, you can lower difficulty, giving yourself more positive runes, which have good effects, or you can increase difficulty, which gives you only one positive rune in total, and you have to equip four negative ones, which I can't even do. And if you can't equip all the slots, well, you can't do that difficulty yet. And on top of that, you can also equip a certain rune, I believe. Mikasa Sukasa. Ah, here it is. Their Cold Medallions. Fall. Reduces max health by 50%. After 5 seconds of not taking damage, health will rapidly regenerate. It says rapid. It's like 1 or 2 HP per second or two. Which does add up. And it lets you not be knocking on death's door when you go into a new area. I think it's pretty good. And it helps out. You can also take ones to increase your max health. You have ways to progress your character to make the game easier. And then you can increase difficulty to still make it challenging, as we saw with the difficulty sliders and whatnot. I think it's freaking sick. At first, I was kind of bummed because I didn't know what progression would look like, and I was almost feeling as if I made a mistake getting the game. But then you see all these ways you can progress your character that I am a big fan of. Anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Auf Wiedersehen.